Thank you so much. I have a lot to say. I'll try to keep it brief, but I want to start by thanking Mr. Baker, wherever he, when he got up here and he said he didn't know exactly why he was here, he was asking himself that question, and I thought to myself, well, when I saw your name, I thought, finally, my high school triple jumping career to be celebrated, but no, no, communication and compassion. That's what we're celebrating, and I appreciate that. Thank you. And it is why I'm here, but it's because of the lessons I learned from Illinois Humanities. And the group of people assembled in this room is just extraordinary. The leadership at IH, Angel Isaguere now, but also Christina Valaitis, whom I was lucky to sit next to and learn about this effort to get the Odyssey Project up and running. And lo and behold, next thing I knew, I was a lifelong committed person to the Odyssey Project. But all the teachers in the room who are engaging in the program and all the people now running community classrooms for envisioning justice, and two of my students from the first year of the Odyssey Project are here, Tia Williams and E.J. Hendricks, which means so much to me. And the fact of the matter is, any of us is just so privileged to have the chance to be a teacher and to stand in a community like this. There are so many things that go into making that opportunity and that possibility. But I do want to celebrate the special opportunity that Illinois Humanities gave me. It's true to say that Illinois Humanities gave me my public voice. Not a slightly surprising thing to say, especially when you hear about some of two PhDs and blah, 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 list of credentials and things like that. But the fact is, academics have a very bad habit of putting on our eye shade equivalents, hunkering down and focusing on the specific requirements of our discipline and life inside the walls of a university. I was hungry for something else. We don't always know what the source of our motivations is. Now, years later, on how I shouldn't have told him how many years, my friend. Okay, that's supposed to be our little secret, the number of years. Years later, I can tell what my motivations were, what my reason was for grabbing so hard onto the Odyssey Project and putting a lot of my heart and soul into it. It's a pretty simple reason, and the fact that it wasn't obvious to me at the time is embarrassing, but I was at exactly the same time that I began working on the Odyssey Project, working on distance learning correspondences with my beloved baby cousin who was in prison. He was the kid I wanted to be teaching, but I couldn't. And beloved though University of Chicago students are to me and were to me, they weren't enough. They weren't enough. Because the need for what the humanities offers was so profound in so many other quarters of the world that did have not have access to classrooms on campuses like the University of Chicago. It is exactly the need that Mr. Baker pointed to. The need to understand a life. We understand lives through stories. We also understand them through the analysis that history and social science brings. We need STEM skills too. It's true, they're useful, but they do not teach you to understand a life. And you can build and make a life only with these resources from the arts and humanities. Apologies, my scientist friends. Science, again, is beautiful, but it should be a partner with what we get out of the humanities and arts. And it's not just that we understand, I'm talking to friends, there we go. <laughs> It's not just that we understand a life through the arts and humanities. We have the chance to understand our life together. And that's why the work the Illinois Humanities does is so important of building community conversations with the resources of the humanities, inviting people to work together to diagnose our circumstances and find pathways forward to improved human flourishing together through conversation. And again, a small point, we can only make our worlds better together through conversation, which means through words, which means 
the caliber of our words, the art with which we wield them, is transformative. We forget that. Language comes to us so easily. We all do it all the time. It's kind of ordinary. We don't really think much of it. It's one of those beautiful human things we take for granted. But the humanities don't let us take language and arts and expression for granted. And in that regard, they give people tools of empowerment over and over and over again. That was what I learned particularly from my students in the Odyssey Project. We worked together on, of all things, the Declaration of Independence. Not a text I imagined myself teaching, but I was trying to solve the puzzle of how do you deliver the highest quality education to students who may not have a high school degree. Right? It's, like a little, it's a puzzle. How do you solve that puzzle? And the answer is you use short texts. Really high quality, short texts. Turns out these days, all my kids, Harvard kids, they need short texts too. <laughs> all right? Nobody reads anymore. But quality, and you dig in working on those texts. And it was my students who really showed me that the Declaration of Independence, for all that we associate it with Thomas and Jefferson's flaws, is our text. It is about communities, again, diagnosing their circumstances. That list of grievances in the middle of the Declaration is a diagnosis of the world that people were living in. They came together through community to offer a diagnosis and to make their declaration, just as we can now make our declaration, about the world that we want to build. I got a gift card when I got to the hotel last night from Illinois Humanities with a quotation from a student in the program. I just want to read it because it is probably the single greatest gift you could give me. To Danielle Allen, your book, Our Declaration, erased my cynicism regarding the words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, all people, are created equal. My gift to you this afternoon is that sentence. All right, I'm gonna just give it to you complete form, which is the thing I like to do, so you can take it away and mull it over. But I do this to say thank you from the heart to my friends at Illinois Humanities who have given me so much. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. But among these rights, as examples, are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principle and organizing its power in such form as to them, as to us, shall seem most likely to affect our safety and happiness. Thank you. Come on, everybody get out. Daniel Allen.